Hello everyone. Welcome to this very special live Facebook broadcast today. There are two critical components for your healing. Did you hear that? There are two critical components for your healing. That's what I want to talk about today. What is your critical need? I want you to tell me about it right now here on Facebook. Type it out. Put it right here on Facebook. What critical need are you facing? Is it something spiritual? Is it something emotional? Is it something physical? Is it something financial like debt, which I've been talking about now for this whole month? Is it something in your marriage or in your business or your job? Do you feel as if your faith has failed or is failing? Do you feel like every time you take a step forward, you get pushed two steps backwards by the devil? What is it? What critical need do you have today? I want to talk to you about two critical components for your healing. And I want to give you time this morning to uh, write it out and send it to me because I'm going to lay my hands on every prayer request. I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe God. And as I get ready to do that, as you're sending it to me, I want to begin to pray now the scriptures that I pray every morning, early in the morning. I woke up before my alarm clock went off this morning. <laughs> I woke up about four o'clock in the morning uh, and I already began uh, getting ready for this uh, for this special time on Facebook and to prepare myself for this message. Two critical components, two critical components for your healing. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes' time. Father, I bless you and praise you today. I thank you for your goodness and mercy. I thank you for your tender, loving kindness, even as people are contacting, contacting me right now on Facebook with their most critical needs. I set my faith in advance, believing you for healing, for you are the source of healing. And as I pray this morning, I start out by praying Psalm 91. I who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation, there shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I will call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. Now that's the 91st Psalm and I pray that over myself, over my family and over all my friends and partners every day. And so I'm praying it over you today. Now, people are already starting to send in their most critical needs. You can do that right now. Share this video with your family and friends uh, today. Uh, before I minister to you today, let's uh, pray the 103rd Psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I love the 103rd Psalm. I pray that over me, over my family, and I pray that over you and everyone watching on Facebook today. Now let's pray the 23rd Psalm. And of course, you've heard me say this before. This is my favorite passage in the entire Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my favorite passage in the whole Bible. And I pray that over me, over my family, and I pray that over you today. Now, what is the most critical need that you're facing? Let me know about it on Facebook. Share this video with your family and with your friends today. One more prayer. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Remember, the disciples came to Jesus one day and said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, pray after this manner. Or in other words, use this formula. You don't have to use these exact words, although I'm going to pray those words that he prayed, but pray after this fashion. And we'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Praise God. I am so glad that you joined me today for this special Facebook video. Uh, my subject today is the two most critical components for your healing. When uh, Lindsay and I got married, and by the way, we celebrated our 39th wedding anniversary just about 10 or 12 days ago, the 11th of this month, 39 years she and I have been married together. Seems like it's gone very quickly. 39 years is, is a long time, but it has gone very fast. Uh, when we got married, uh, Lindsay had a little pocket of doubt in one area of her life, and I had a little pocket of doubt in one area of my life. Now, that might be your story today. You might have a little pocket of doubt in some area of your life, some area of your life where it's difficult for you to believe. Now, with me, it was finances. I had a hard time believing for finances. But Lindsay didn't have any problem with it at all. <laughs> and um, she had a hard time believing for healing. And I didn't have any trouble with that at all. So where she was weak, I was strong. And where I was weak, she was strong. So she helped me. Uh, she helped me with critical components for me to learn how to release my faith and believe God for a miracle in the area of finances. And I helped her in the area where she was weak in helping her to believe for healing. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a, a good thing. She helps me where I'm weak and I help her where she's weak. There are two critical components to your healing. And um, every one of us, I dare say, everyone watching right now, has some area of your life where you have a little pocket of doubt. You have a little trouble believing. Now, it may be uh, believing God for some something special. It may be believing God for finances. It may be believing God for getting out of debt. And as I said, I've been talking about getting out of debt all month. The, the Lord put a mandate on my heart back before Christmas and said, uh, begin this year by helping people to get out of debt. And so I've gone on an all-out assault against debt. And testimonies are coming in now almost every day people whose debt situation is beginning to turn around. We're already hearing about debt cancellation, supernatural debt removal, and if you have a testimony like that, share it with me. Let me know what's, what's going on. Just email me at oralroberts.com uh, slash prayer. Anyway, uh, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Uh, there was a man in the Bible who had a little pocket of doubt. If you remember the story, Jesus and Peter, James, and John came down from the mountainside what we call the Mount of Transfiguration, after Elijah and Moses had appeared to them. And after Jesus' clothing turned bright white, Peter, James, and John saw it. After they came down the mountain, they ran into a man who had brought his demon-possessed son for the other nine disciples to pray for and to bring healing to, and they tried and they failed. And when Jesus came down, uh, the, the man said, I, I brought my son to your disciples. They prayed, but nothing happened. So Jesus, if there's anything you can do, and Jesus 
Jesus said, what do you mean if there's anything I can do? It's not if I can do anything, it's if you can believe. And the man replied, well, Jesus, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. Or in other words, Jesus, I do believe, but uh, I have a little pocket of doubt in this one area. His boy was demon-possessed. The, the demon in him would throw him into the fire, throw him into the water, nearly kill him. In fact, he had an attack right there when Jesus was standing there. And Jesus said, bring him to me. And he touched the boy and healed him. Two very important, critical components to your healing. And really, as far as I'm concerned, there are only two components to healing. Number one is the name of Jesus. And number two is faith in that name. Everything else that we can talk about today Everything else that you can find in the Bible, everything else that we could uh, present this morning on Facebook comes under those two headings, the name of Jesus and faith in that name. Now, we understand that the book of Philippians teaches us that God has given, in fact, it's the fourth chapter, God has given Jesus a name which is above every name named in heaven and earth. That means his name is above cancer. His name is above fear and doubt. His name is above heart problems. His name is above blood, it's above blood pressure, blood sugar problems. His name is above cataracts and glaucoma. His name is above hardness of hearing. His name is above artery problems, leg problems, foot problems, knee problems, hip problems, back problems, shoulder problems. His, head, or his, his name is above tumors, masses, growths. His name is above circulatory problems, breathing problems, asthma, emphysema. You name any name, no matter what it is. And the name of Jesus is higher. For God, the Bible says, has exalted the name of Jesus and given him a name which is above every name named in heaven and earth. There is no other name higher. And he went on to say, this is the Apostle Paul, at that name every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, on the last night of Jesus' earthly life, in John chapter 16, verse 24, he gathered his disciples together and he said, up till now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, up to that point, they had seen Jesus ask. They'd heard Jesus cry out, Abba, Father. Uh, they had heard him say, Father, I know you always hear me when I pray. They had heard him say that, but he, they'd never done it. Well, Jesus was about to go to the cross at this time. He was about to cut a new covenant in his shed blood for the remission of sin. He was about to take on the stripes on his back for your healing and mine, 39 stripes. And now he was going to ascend to heaven and send the Holy Spirit, which he did on the day of Pentecost. But he turned to his disciples and said, Before now, you, you 12, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now, what does that really mean? It means that Jesus gave you and me the power of attorney, the right to use his name. That's why the most critical component of your faith is the name of Jesus, because his name is higher than whatever you're going through. If it's debt, if it's sickness, disease, if it's fear, if it's depression, if it's discouragement, if it's disillusionment, if you're lonely, if you're bitter, if you're angry, or whatever it is, uh, financial, spiritual, or whatever it is, the name of Jesus is higher. Now, that's the first component. But in order for that to work, you've got to believe. And I've got news for you, friend. It's just as easy to believe as it is to doubt. It takes no more effort to believe in the name of Jesus than it is to doubt it. It's so easy to believe if you just decide, I'm going to believe. Now, as I said, when Lindsay and I got married, I had trouble believing for finances, and she had trouble believing for healing. But we each worked on one another with the name of Jesus. And I came to the realization that Jesus' name was higher than the financial situations that I was facing. And she came to realize that the name of Jesus was higher than the attacks on her body. And so she helped me with the name of Jesus believing for finances, and I helped her with the name of Jesus believing for healing. That's a good marriage, isn't it? Well, the first component to healing is the name of Jesus. The second component is 
faith in that name. Romans 12, 3 tells us that God has given to every person the measure of faith. You have faith, friend. You were born with it. You cannot even get saved without faith. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't flip on your computer, your laptop, your uh, iPhone, your smartphone. You wouldn't flip it on this morning to watch me if you didn't have faith to believe. You wouldn't sit in the chair you're sitting in unless you felt that that chair would support your weight. You'd use your faith to believe. You wouldn't get in your car or get on a bus or get on a commuter train or get in an airplane and go anywhere if you didn't believe they were going to get you there safely. You use your faith every day. <laughs> you make a decision to use your faith. And faith is what you hold on to until you receive what you're believing for. So the number one component is the name of Jesus, and the second component is faith in that name. And as I said, it's just as easy to believe as it is to doubt. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pray over you. And Jesus said in Mark 11, I think it's the 24th verse, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now let's read it together again like this. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. See the difference? When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. In other words, you believe when you pray. When you pray, you believe. You don't wait a few days and say, well, let's just wait a while and try to figure this out and analyze and see if this is going to work or not. No, 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 no. While you're praying, you believe. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive. And you shall have it. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Right in the middle of your prayer. Right in the middle of the prayer I'm going to pray, believe. Now, let's take it a step further. Let's bring that scripture right up to today. Today, when I pray, believe. When I pray for you, believe. Don't say, well, I'll wait till his Facebook post is over and then I'll start believing. Or maybe I'll wait until after dinner tonight and then I'll believe. Or maybe I'll think about it until tomorrow and then I'll believe. Or, or maybe I'll wait till I get to church on Sunday and then I'll believe. And Don't do that. Jesus said, what things ever you desire, when you pray, believe. And the question is, when I pray, will you believe? I have faith. You have faith. But it's going to do us much good unless we believe with it. And uh, I went to bed last night thinking of praying about this. I got up, well, I woke up about 4 o'clock in the morning thinking about praying and praying about it. Because I really believe with all my heart that if you will go into agreement with the prayer I'm about to pray, I believe with all my heart we're going to begin to see some tremendous miracles and people are going to begin to send me testimonies from all over the United States and Canada and all over the world that when they prayed this day, today, with me and believed, miracles began to happen. Now, first of all, let's deal with that little pocket of doubt, okay? It may be about finances. It may be about your emotions. It may be about debt or financial situations. It may be about something in your family or your business or your job or your ministry. Let's deal with that first. Father, it's not by might, not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit that I take hold of this debt, uh, a, a doubt, excuse me, this doubt, this little pocket of doubt, which has kept you from believing God. In Jesus' name, I reach out. Now watch what I'm going to do now. This is not in the flesh. This is in the Spirit. So understand what I'm doing. I reach out. See my hand right here? I reach out. I take hold of that pocket of doubt. I take hold of it and pull it out of you. And I hand it to this angel that's standing beside me. You know, when I first entered the ministry, the Lord told me that an angel would be with me. I've never seen him, but I have felt him numerous times. I've felt him brush up against me. I feel him standing behind me and beside me right now. You may not be able to see him. Sometimes people say that they see my angel. I've never seen this angel, but I know he's there. And the Lord said, whenever I pull sickness and disease by faith out of someone, take it and hand it to the angel standing behind you. And I, I said to the Lord one day, why? He said, because the angel knows where to take it. <laughs> so I take hold of that pocket of doubt. 
come out. In the name of Jesus. And I believe God. Now let's deal with whatever it is. Because the name of Jesus is higher. And I have faith in that name. And now faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And I've been pumping and pouring the word of God into you in these last 15 or 20 minutes. Which means your faith is rising for you to believe. And so in the authority of the name of Jesus, I come against this satanic attack and I come against it with the name of Jesus and faith in that name. You foul, tormenting sickness and disease, I adjure you by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and faith in that name, you come out. I'm talking to the mass, the tumor, the growth, the cancer, come out. I take hold of it by faith and pull it out. Cancer in the bone, come out. Cancer in the breast, come out. Cancer in the skin, come out. Cancer in the brain, come out. Cancer in the organ, Come out in the name of Jesus. Did I mention blood, cancer in the blood? Come out in the name of Jesus. You know, we are constantly receiving testimonies from people who have been healed of cancer, and the doctors have confirmed it. And I, I just won't read one on television, uh, you know, unless I know, a testimony that is, unless I know it's been confirmed by the doctors. I don't take just somebody's word. I, I say go back and have your doctor examine it. I've had so many cancer testimonies over these last years. Now, in the name of Jesus, I come against the blood pressure and the blood sugar problem. There are many of you right now, you've got high blood pressure or low blood pressure. You've got high blood sugar or you've got low blood sugar. In the name, and, I, and I include hypertension. In the name of Jesus, I come against the blood pressure, the blood sugar problem, and I come against the hypertension. Now, watch this. In the name of Jesus, I reach and take hold of that, and pull it out. Come out in the name of Jesus. You foul, tormenting attack against blood pressure and blood sugar and hypertension, come out. Now there's healing happening right now all across this Facebook network. And thank God for a, for a, a media medium to, uh, to do this, you know, live on Facebook. I'm here in my home today. I'm in my little office. But this is going all over the world. I've got people watching me all over the world today. Receive it because there's no distance in prayer. Now, in the name of Jesus, I come against the loss of hearing and the problem with your eyes. In the name of Jesus, I block the blindness the glaucoma, the cataract, I take hold of it with my faith and pull it out. And the hardness of hearing, eardrum, you station tube problem, I take hold of you. I pray for healing right now. Eyes, listen to me, eyes, see. And right now, my face is becoming clear to someone. I've been blurry to you. And someone else, you only see part of my face uh, because of a cataract. That's leaving somebody right now in the name of Jesus. And their ears that are opening up, ears are popping and snapping now. And there's a tumor, there's a mass that's being, a growth being healed right now in the name. It's under an arm, and, and there's another, another one as well being healed in the name of Jesus. Now concerning your breathing, I'm talking about COPD, asthma, emphysema, any type of bronchial uh, sinus condition, uh, bronchial tubes, lungs, uh, fluid on the lungs. In the name of Jesus, I take hold of the lung condition, pull it out of you. Someone may say, Richard, what in the world are you doing? Well, I'm not doing something in the world. I'm doing something that's scriptural. I'm doing something that is Bible-based. And that is commanding sickness and disease to come out. I'm taking the two critical, important components of faith, the name of Jesus and faith in that name, and I'm putting them together for your healing. And friend, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'll do that, Lord. I come against arthritis. I'm talking about pain and arthritis in the feet, in the legs, the knees, the hips, the joints, the bones, the brittleness of the bones, the shoulder, the back, 
the neck. In the name of Jesus, every trace of arthritis, I take hold of you. I arrest you. Come out in the name of Jesus. Now there's healing power coming in feet and legs right now. It's going up people's feet and legs right now. Coming up into your, into your, above your knee and into your torso. That's the healing power of God. That's not me, friend. That's Jesus doing his work. That's the name of Jesus and faith in that name working as you believe. Believe with me as I pray. Don't just sit there and say, well, I wonder as I wonder. <laughs> Don't do that. No, no, no. Just as easy to believe. Believe God. When you pray, believe, the Bible says. I come against this satanic attack in your, in your, uh, in your lymphatic system, in your skeletal system, in your endocrine system. I pray over every organ in your body to function normally. Kidneys, liver, digestion, colon, gallbladder, pancreas, heart, beat normally. In the name of Jesus, every organ function properly. I take hold of any type of attack against those organs and pull it out of you. I rebuke diverticulitis. Uh -huh. I rebuke the effects of AIDS in Jesus' name. Pull that out of you in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me, friend. Many people today are suffering in their emotions. I take hold of depression. I take hold of anxiety. I take hold of fear and doubt and worry and discouragement. I take hold of it and pull it out of you in the name of Jesus. You foul, tormenting attack against my brother, my sister's emotions in the name of of Jesus. You come out. You turn loose of God's property. I command it in the name of Jesus. Satan, I command you to take your hands off. Praise God. Every demonic force, come out and come off in Jesus' name. I'll tell you, people are being set free right now in the name of Jesus. Now, concerning finances and debt, and I've been honing in on that the past few weeks, because God spoke to me to go out on all-out assault against debt. You foul, tormenting finance problem. You debt. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I command you to stop it. I pray for your finances to turn around and for you to believe it. And I pray that you begin to plant your seed away from yourself. The best way I know to how to begin to get out of debt is to sow a seed against your need. I've been talking about that. I won't take the time to talk much about it today. I may talk about it again next week. We'll see how the Lord leads. The best way I know how to get out of debt and how to get your bills paid and get your needs met is to plant seed away from yourself. Just like Peter did when he hadn't caught any fish and he gave Jesus his boat. He planted a seed against his need and Jesus used the boat and then when he gave it back, it was full of fish. So Peter could pay his bills and pay his debts and make his payments. Now, I'm telling you how the Bible works and how the Spirit of God works. I'll tell you, it works. I can't take hold of that debt. And I'm praying for God to turn it around for you. There are people watching right now, you're believing to sell property. You're believing to sell houses, homes, apartment buildings, uh, uh, office buildings. You've got things for sale that haven't sold. In the name of Jesus, I take hold of that property Command it to sell in the name of Jesus. Sell, 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 sell. In Jesus' name. I'm praying for somebody this morning. You're trying to buy a piece of property and you haven't been able to close the deal. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that God will anoint you and he will anoint that seller so that you can go in there and buy that property and make the right deal. In the name of Jesus. Some of you trying to rent something right now and you've been stalled off by something. I bind that in the name of Jesus. Some of you watching, you got marital problems. You've been thinking about divorcing your wife, divorcing your husband. Well, you said for better or for worse. <laughs> That's what you said. In Jesus' name, I pray for God to bring healing and love back into your marriage and for there to be some forgiving on both sides and some give and take. You know, marriage is a give and take. You know, there are things in marriage that I don't like, and there are things in marriage that Lindsay doesn't like, but we, we, learn, how, we learn how to get along. <laughs> and I'm praying that over you today. I'm praying over you. I'm praying over your job, over your business, over your ministry. 
Maybe somebody's watching and, and you don't have a job and you need a job. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for God to send you to the right employer with the right hours and the right salary and the right benefits and the right hours. I get testimonies almost every day from people who've gotten a job when they couldn't get a job. People send their prayer request about it. they need a job. And we pray. I pray every day over them. Oh, also, I pray over those of you who have family members that are ill. I've been noticing, I've been reading some of the prayer requests as they come across the screen in front of me here. <clears throat> so many of you are talking about family members. Well, God's concerned about your family. Remember when, when uh, Moses wanted to take uh, the children of Israel out into the, the uh, wilderness to pray, and Pharaoh said, uh, well, you men can go, but uh, you can't take your family with you. I got news. If Satan can't get you, he wants to get the next generation. And Moses said, oh, no, 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 Pharaoh. We're all going or none of us are going. And the plagues just kept coming until Egypt was just decimated. And finally, Pharaoh said, get out of here. <laughs> well, I pray over your family today. Your family is important. The next generation is critical. I pray over your husband, your wife, your, your sons, your daughters, your, your grandchildren your great-grandchildren, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your nieces, your nephews, your grandparents, your mom, your dad. I pray over your family, your in-laws and your outlaws. I, for those you love and those you're not sure if you love. I, I pray over them right now. I pray for healing in your family in the name of Jesus. You know, everybody, everybody's got somebody in their family that well, you know what I mean. Everybody's got somebody like that. And I pray for him in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Father, I give you praise today. I worship you. I give you thanks. I thank you that you gave us the right to use your name. And we can use our faith in that name. The name of Jesus is higher than any name named in heaven and earth. And we have faith in that name. And I believe with you. Now, listen to me. Listen to this very carefully. I'm not coming out of this prayer of agreement. I'm setting my faith with you in Jesus' name. And I'm not coming out of this prayer of agreement until the miracle comes. Now, the miracle may come quickly. It may come over a period of time. I'm not in charge of that agenda. God's in charge of that. But I do believe it's coming. Okay? Now, if you feel like you need further prayer, uh, go online, oralroberts.com slash prayer, or call the Abundant Life Prayer Group, 918-495-7777. That's oralroberts.com slash prayer or 918-495-7777. When you go online, check out our bookstore. We have lots of resources that are available. And by the way, today is a very good day for you to plant a seed faith gift unto the Lord through this healing ministry. If this ministry is a blessing to you, thank you for supporting it. You know, this ministry doesn't happen by itself. It happens because of men and women who sow financial gifts each month and help me to be on TV and, and uh, on social media and our, our meetings and services all over the world. All of our resources that we send out. All of our letters. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry. I appreciate it, but more than that, I set my faith for God to use your gift uh, in this ministry and then multiply it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. I am out of time. God bless you. Remember, I'll be laying my hands on every one of these prayer requests. You can uh, share this with your family and friends and you can go back and watch it over and over and over again because it'll be up all through this week. God richly bless you. I'll see you next time. Don't forget tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Central Time, Lindsay will have her special Thursday prayer day. See you next time. Bye-bye.